what in the world? Well, we've got something really cool to talk about today. Uh, this, as you can tell, is a Lego train. Um, my history of trains um, certainly extends well beyond just HO scale. Um, I haven't shown a whole lot of it on here, but I mean, I do have uh, N scale, I've had some O scale, G scale. Never really owned any S scale, but there is some in the family also. Uh, but anyways, uh, what this set is here is I've had this uh, probably since the late 80s. Um, probably somewhere around 87, 88, 89 is when I got this. Um, but very cool set. Um, it's been quite some time since I've run this. Probably at least 20 years. So it's been pretty much sitting in the closet for uh, all that time. And from what I can tell, from the most part, I mean, the box is in pretty ragged shape here, but uh, everything still seems to be included in here. Still have the original manual. And uh, in the box here is pretty much all the track that's in here. I didn't even know I had these, but uh, there's switches. So that's pretty cool. Uh, one of the things with the track here is it's just plastic. Uh, there's no electrifi le electrification through this. Um, so pretty much how everything's going to work is mainly off of the locomotive here. Which it's kind of modeled after, uh, I guess, a German railroad, this DB here. Because a lot of the Lego stuff's very European. And then this, there's just a gearbox that's in here, and that's what turns the motors in it. has a power connector here. And it's a battery-operated train, so not really the tender, but in this car here, top pops off. There's a spot for three C batteries, which I'm going to have to go get some of them, because I don't really have anything that uses C. Uh, nothing really uses C batteries anymore. It's very, very 80s. And the electrical connector just plugs in here. These little parts here are magnets. That's kind of like your couplers. And uh, one of the cars here. This is sort of like a baggage car, I guess. And there's little skids of things that are in here. These little things go in there. And doors go closed, of course. Operating doors with a little guy in there. Pretty cool. And here's a flat car. So, just kind of a three car set, not a huge deal. As far as the track, uh, kind of how it works is you'll have these, basically your ties. Um, they're all the same. Track just snaps on at one point there. If you're attaching two pieces together, you just kind of put one here. And then the next part of the rail, right on there. So it kind of just all snaps together. Snap track before there was snap track. And this part here, I think, is going to require some restoration. Is this little doohickey here. Basically, there's a little arm and it raises up this plate. And I think if memory serves, yes. On the bottom of the tender, I guess you could call it, there's a little button here. So when it goes over the track and hits this little piece that is sticking up, it actually causes a break in the electrical connection. And that's when you can shut it off, which is kind of the neutral position here, backwards, forwards. There's no speed control, there is only one speed, so it's kind of on or off. And, I forgot I even had this. They even give you kind of like a little uh, template. You can make your own track plan. How cool is that?
not really sure how much track I have or whether I'm missing any pieces or not. Um, I'm going to have to put it together to see what radius this is. But... I would guess width wise this is very close to S scale. Definitely bigger than HO, not quite O scale. And also very cool here is the little operating forklift, which has a little spring in it, still works. Look at this guy, he's even got a backwards hat on, how cool is that? And just also taking a look at the box here. Well, so I guess they uh, do have sort of what the track equivalents are. So 70 centimeters, I guess, is your radius. Uh, for you people able to do metric conversions out there, I'll have to see what that comes out to. So next we'll put it together and uh, see if anything's missing here and I gotta make a run out for some C batteries. So we'll see how that goes. With a little bit of work, um, I actually did manage to get this running again. I actually kind of figured, I guess I took it for granted, I figured I could put everything back together and it would just work again. Wasn't the case, uh, there was actually some corrosion in the battery terminals. So I had to go ahead and clean that off and then in the uh, motor drive, um, once it did start to run, it was extremely squeaky. So I had to tear that apart and uh, just gave it a little bit of oil and it seemed to quiet down quite a bit. So, uh, one of the things you can do here with the little forklift guy, which is pretty neat. We can go ahead and pick up the load here. Drop it in there. How cool is that? Alright, so kind of how this works is uh, there's two directions here. Uh, you, of course, have a forward, neutral, and then reverse. And with this little kind of like little pop-up piece here, pretty much what this does is there's almost like a kill switch on the bottom of this where it rolls over it. And if this part is extended up it makes contact and kind of stops the uh, engine so we can go ahead and put it in drive here and then we'll release this and it should start to go and that's pretty much the only speed it goes at running this on the carpet just because I did have a flat surface big enough to run this in the uh, layout room. So if I want to stop the train there's two ways I can do it. I can either hit the switch on the uh, like little red car there behind the engine or I can flip this up and then this piece is now extended up and when it rolls over it is stop. And then I can shut it off here or I can hit reverse. And that's kind of all it is. A um, lot of fun. Um, like I said, got this a really, really long time ago. Um, I guess LEGO doesn't even do train sets anymore. Or if they do, there was actually the version that came after this was developed, I guess, in the early 90s. They went to a 9-volt system. And I think later they went to a 12-volt system. But then they actually had electrified rails, kind of more like you what you see on your traditional model trains. But uh, this system is using a 4.5 volt motor, 
in system which dates all the way back to the 1970s as far as what Lego did. So, I mean, of course, there's different eras. Um, actually, when I did take the motor apart, um, it actually does have a Bueller motor in it. And there was actually a date stamp on it, which I think said 61388. So, uh, and that's kind of what I figured. This was around 88 or 89 that I got this. But uh, very happy to get it running again. Um, wasn't too much work to get it going again. Um, there were some like little nicks that I had in the bottom here because I was trying to pry off the red part there. But uh, not too bad. I mean, it's not damaged or anything like that. But uh, pretty cool. And then back in the 80s, this was one of the cooler things you could have as far as the Legos went. But just wanted to show this off a little bit just because not a lot of people even know that these exist. And uh, they do have some value. Um, one of these unopened goes for several hundred dollars. I'm not sure what they actually retailed at back in the day, but uh, one of these, I think there was one that was mint unopened was something like $1,500. So some of these Lego sets can go for just crazy money. And uh, it's not too hard to find extra track online. Um, I did find a couple uh, places that had it on eBay, and I think I could get it for around $50 or less for a pretty healthy amount. So I might buy some more of it um, or try to make some other little improvements to this set. But uh, very happy to have it out of the closet for, you know, for the first time in about 20 years. Um, so pretty cool.